Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to consider various one-sided versions of the first derivative test. And this is building toward the actual first derivative test, which is a two-sided test. Okay. And so but this, this video is just going to be on the one-sided versions. So here I have a function f of one variable and a point c in the domain. And I first consider the left side and then I'll consider the right side. So for the left side, my assumption is that f is left continuous at c. That means that the f value at c equals the what? Hmm? Fc. Yeah, fc equals what? The left hand limit. That's yes. what it means mm -hmm. to say it's left continuous. And I'm also assuming f is differentiable on the left of c. So what does that mean? It means that for x to the immediate left of c, I'm not writing immediate left, but that's what I mean. Okay. Uh, so for x to the immediate left of c, f prime x is defined. Am I saying that f is left differentiable at c? No. I'm not saying that the left hand derivative of f at c exists. I'm not saying anything about the differentiability of f at c. Okay. So left continuous at c and differentiable on the left of c. Suppose f prime x is greater than 0 on the left of c. What can you conclude about f at c? Hmm? Is it local, strict local max, strict local min? What? Strict local max. Strict local max. Okay, while I write that, explain why. Hmm, explain. Uh, because the limit has a different quotient, we can go from there. Well, no, this is not that one because that difference quotient thing is if you are taking the left hand derivative, but you are not taking the left hand derivative here. We are taking the derivative at points on the left. Okay, so it's different from that thing about taking the one sided derivative. So the derivative is positive on the left means the function is what on the left? Increasing. Are we here? Okay, increasing. It's increasing on the immediate left of C. But what what do you then say to say that it's increasing up to and including C? What do you need to do? What do you need to use? F. You mean F prime x equals zero? No, no. Forget about F prime x. So F prime x is greater than zero on the left. That means that F is increasing on the left of C. Mm -hmm. But how do you know it's increasing up to and including C? Because we don't know anything about f prime at c. We don't know anything about the derivative at c. So how do you include the points? What do you use? Uh, continuity. Continuity. So it's left continuous at c. Okay. And, and that tells you that it's increasing on the left of c. But that increasing behavior you can include to the point c. And therefore it's increasing up to and including c. And that's why it has a strict local max from the left at C. Okay. What about f prime x less than zero on the left of C? What can you conclude there? Uh, decreasing. Decreasing on the left of C. Since it's left continuous at C, that tells you that it's decreasing up to and including the point C. And therefore, you have a strict local minimum. Okay, let's go to the right. So for the right, we assume that f is right continuous at c and differentiable on the right of c. So what are we assuming on the right hand derivative of f at c? Hmm? They exist. No, actually we are not assuming anything about the right hand derivative of f at c. We are only assuming stuff about the derivative for points to the right of c. Okay. Okay, so this, so there was, there's another video where I discuss things about the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative at the point. But this is slightly different. It's talking about the derivative on the left of the point and on the right of the point. Okay. So what can you say here? F prime x is positive on the right. That means the function is decreasing. Hmm? Derivative is positive. So it's increasing, increasing on the immediate right. right. And since it's right continuous at the point, you can extend that increasing behavior 
to the point mm -hmm. and so and so what you get it's a strict local minimum from the right okay yeah. because it's slightly bigger on the immediate right Okay, and uh, what can you say about the last case? F prime x is less than zero on the right. It's a what? It's a local maximum. Maximum on the right. Why? The function is what on the immediate right? Decreasing. Decreasing, and uh, and it's continuous at the point, so you can extend that decreasing behavior. So it's it's like going down from the point. So it's a strict local maximum from the right. Okay, a couple of quick remarks. So first is you notice that that sort of the the sign condition for max is different where you are left and right, right? So for max on the left, the derivative has to be greater than zero on the left. Max on the right, the derivative has to be less than zero on the right. Okay, so the sign condition is op opposite for max, and similarly for min, the sign conditions on the left and the right are opposite, and that's going to be important when we do the combined sign version. Okay, the other thing I want to say is, what happens if we allow equal to zero here? So what happened if we were to allow equal to zero here? Well, you may lose strictness. So the strict thing could go away. Now, it still will not usually go away, unless it's sort of identically zero on the left or right. So let me just explain that. So if f prime x equals to zero on the immediate left of c, then what does that mean? f is constant on the immediate left of c, mm -hmm. in which case it won't be a strict local max from the left. However, if f prime x is sort of oscillating between zero and positive numbers, so it's sort of increasing, then become constant, increasing, or if, if it's like that kind of oscillation, then f will still have a strict local max. So you could maybe lose strictness if you allow equality with zero, but even there, unless it becomes sort of identically zero on the immediate left, you will still be a strict local max or strict local min. 